Yeah. 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 I got to speak to everybody here. Our Lincoln speech is a fact that I don't prepare very well. <laughs> um, so I didn't prepare anything here to forget it. Um, uh, speaking to Norman Mailer, I think it's probably a good thing to say. I try to be as, as honest as possible moving forward. Um, I was named Mailer after Norman Mailer. Armies of the Night was a big book for my father. Um, uh, published in, ended up being published in 68 when I was when I was born. And uh, my father recently passed away. And uh, I think that he wanted to give me the ability to be a fool or a genius. I think uh, my dad also wanted me to look very close to his own mind. Uh, ever since I was young, he always said, uh, it's all good writing material, which is a very strange thing to tell a six-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> but he gave me, um, he really gave me an escape route, I think, um, to withdraw at times and become a sort of journalist and like a spectator of their own life, to formulate words when things are very tense within the family. Um, I was also raised at a group home for like emotionally disturbed kids and uh, juvenile delinquents, and there it came very handy and was said on an hourly basis almost that, that uh, it's all good writing. <laughs> 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 so I actually, uh, just as a kind of inroad into my father, because at the moment, because he stumbled and said I was named uh, after the um, My father uh, at the group home, we had a back room. Uh, which is where I lived uh, with all of our possessions. At one point, a guy crawled into the ceiling in between the insulation with a kitchen knife and cut down, dropped in, and uh, stole my radio. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I used to sleep on a couch back there. And uh, my dad's uh, incomplete uh, dreams, uh, he was going to make a room up top. So he tore off the ceiling and put that thick uh, plastic that you put over as you're making things. But then winter came, and I remember sleeping in the bed, a huge, like, 60-gallon bubble of water over the winter rain, and it came down. And uh, eventually, that was the first water bed I ever slept in. <laughs> <laughs> I should know. Uh, so there was a point when the, the room became a room, uh, although that half a little bit of insulation. And oddly, now I'm thinking about it, from looking around here, uh, a bookcase came in. We had, before I even, he even sheetrocked the rest of the room, um, uh, we had a big bookcase. And I had all of my books. Uh, Judy Byron Spinori here for, uh, with me um, had a bookstore called Books Revisited that I worked at, that um, I lived at, that I learned at, um, which was an alternative writing program. It used to be a, a sort of uh, apprenticeship. And I don't know where it's going to show up on the internet. Um, because you used to be able to, like my friend Jonathan Needham, who worked like 16 years at most books, um, that used to be an MFA program. You'd be around people like Judy and Byron and the other book workers, and uh, everybody would have their opinions, and it mattered. Uh, Isabella Yende, uh, Amy Tan, uh, our poet laureate, um, Kay Ryan, uh, who do people who know you get problems with? Anyway, books were a huge refuge for me, and uh, the story is such that we had a spiral staircase going up to this room, and of course the spiral staircase was not um, well attached to me. And it fell over, sort of like I remember climbing it up and down, like uh, in the Poseidon Adventure, when they have to climb on a Christmas tree to get out. That's the way I used to try to get to my room. Um, and you'd have to debate whether to be cold in the back room or go out with the seven criminals uh, to get heat at the pot stove. stove. Um, and I remember one day being woken up, and my father had a very good music collection, but he rarely played music. And I was woken up to, you can't always get what you want. <laughs>